Every year, millions of monarch butterflies travel from as far away as Canada to a few small remote pockets of forest in central Mexico. Here, 10,000 feet above sea level, they will find sanctuary from the freezing winter temperatures in the north. By any measure, their journey south is remarkable, especially when you consider that none of the insects knew where they were headed when they departed from southern Canada, Minnesota, Kansas, and other states east of the Rocky Mountains. This is truly a life or death mission, and the future of their species hangs in the balance. But how do these fragile creatures locate a handful of small colonies where conditions are right to shelter them until spring? For answers, let's go back a few months to the moment the monarch's journey began. In August, the year's final generation of monarch butterflies emerged by the millions throughout the central and eastern United States and Canada. At first glance, they look exactly like their ancestors that completed their metamorphosis in the spring and early summer. Yet genetically, they differ in one very significant way. Instead of having a normal lifespan of only two to six weeks, these butterflies are programmed to live up to nine months. Researchers call them the super generation. This late summer brood is laser focused on one objective. They must reach the same forests that sheltered their great, great, great grandparents the year before. A place that none of them had ever seen. As autumn nears, monarchs from Ontario to Texas detect cooler temperatures and shorter days, two signals that cue their collective departure. Their survival now hinges upon their finely tuned navigational systems. Since the monarchs fly only during the day, the sun is their primary directional reference and they instinctively track its changing position. After rising in the east, the sun appears to move in an arcing path from left to right across the sky. The insect closely monitors its course with an array of sophisticated instruments that include two massive compound eyes and a wide field of vision. A microscopic compass stored within a brain that's smaller than a grain of rice. And a 24-hour clock positioned in each of its antennae. These integrated components will enable the monarch to maintain a consistent southward heading. Now let's take a closer look at how the system works. Its internal clock is light sensitive and when it indicates that it's 10 a.m., the butterfly calculates that to fly south, it must adjust its flight path by about 40 degrees to the right of the sun. Then, when its clock strikes noon, the insect reckons that south is now straight ahead and flies directly toward its celestial target. Two hours later, when the sun moves farther west, the monarch again processes the time change and makes gradual adjustments to stay locked in on the path to its overwintering grounds, still a thousand miles away. By early evening, as the sun fades from view, the insects congregate on tree limbs and shrubs where they will roost until morning, when their clock and compass can resume guidance of their journey south. The monarch's transcontinental flight is an amazing display of navigation and endurance. Yet, this epic migration doesn't end when millions of fragile insects successfully reach Mexico. For once inside the country, they must still find their way to a few specific acres of forest that are hidden within a range of transvolcanic mountains more than 600 miles long. 
and then somehow locate the same individual trees and microclimate that protected their ancestors during previous winters. Finding these precise locations requires additional tools beyond the monarch's sun compass and internal clock. And scientists are now exploring multiple theories for how the insects can pinpoint their final destinations with such incredible accuracy. They include the ability to identify and track both small variations in the Earth's magnetic field and chemical signals emitted by wing scales still lodged in the trees and soil from the previous year. Whatever these studies eventually confirm, two things are certain. The monarch's odyssey is a wonder of the natural world and an indelible fingerprint of the invisible God. For with each wing beat, these flying jewels reveal living proof of a creator who is both artist and engineer. A master craftsman who shapes every organism on our planet into a stunning testimony of his existence and power. This timeless message speaks clearly to anyone with an open mind and a receptive heart.